Hello everyone and welcome to another review. <clears throat> this is going to be on the Shozi Zero pair of in-air monitors. Now before I get started, I'd like to thank Shozi for sending these to me for review. Um, they are a Hong Kong based company and this is their first in-air monitor. Uh, besides this, they only have uh, an AirBud, a uh, DAP, two DAPs actually, you got the Alien and the Alien Gold, and a bunch of amp DAC combos. So this is their first IEM and they have provided to, it to me for free for review and I am grateful to them for that. That in mind, I like to talk about what I like and what I dislike about these earphones. So, first of all, just the build. This is real rosewood. Real rosewood casings on the monitors themselves. And I can, I'm quite sure people can agree with me when I say this is a quite stellar look. Um, on mine particularly, you've got the right monitor is more brown and the left one is more red. And of course with wood, working with wood, wood grain, everything, it's never uniform. So keep that in mind. Um, the same goes for when you buy the THX100s or the Omni or the Vibro. You will get a different stain, uh, not stain, different grain every time. So not that uniform looking, but very organic and very realistic looking to me. A very natural look. However, you move down a bit and then you go here and you see that you have the same rosewood casing right here on the split. And very carefully, if I, I'm not even sure if you can see it on camera, but basically, it says zero etched in right there. So I, I would have preferred their branding to be a little more noticeable than that, because even though this says zero, you don't see Shozi's name until you go all the way down to the plug, go plated. So you look carefully here, and you see Shozi come up. Right there. So very hard to notice the branding. And that's not the only thing that's hard to notice. I found this quite an annoyance to be honest. The left right markers are very hard to see. Because they are in rubberized, raised lettering. Right here and right there left and right and that is incredibly hard to make out if you're going out in like if you're in a slightly darker place or if you're just trying to go about your day because these look identical otherwise i mean for me i can i can memorize that the left channel looks redder than the right one but even then if you're out in a sunny day you can't really tell so i would have preferred this this lettering to be a different color preferably a brown that matches the rest of these earbuds but the last, they are black on black, so hard to make out. All right. Another thing I do not like about the build is the cable. Now the cable is a Litz cable. Um, it's quite sturdy down here, but this past the split, I think it's a little too thin. I would have preferred it to be a little more heft, have a little more heft to it because mm, these are like I don't want to compare them to like the Monk because the Monk is, in my opinion, one of those Airbuds which is just unbelievable for the price. But the Monk had a double cable which felt a lot more durable than this. So I'd prefer for Shozi to have something a little more accommodating in that regard. But otherwise, I I really do prefer this cable over, for example. The Zero Audio Carbo and Carbo Tenore and Carbo Basso. Yes, this is definitely better than those cables, guys. Like this, I don't think this will fray as easily. This won't get attached from here as easily. At least this has this rubberized part to keep it in check. Whereas with those air earphones, it just there's nothing here to keep them in check. You just it's like a cable plugged right into an earphone, and they get frayed, guys. And I've seen it happen to me. So yes, I'm a big fan of the wooden design. As you guys have seen my other reviews, I've reviewed the Omni, the Vibro, the THX100. Love wooden 
cups, wooden designs on earphones, headphones. So I'm a big fan of this look. So these are very, very, very easy to drive. Easier to drive than my Carbo Tenores actually. If I plug these into my phone, I will only need to use 50% volume to get a nice loud sound. Whereas with the Carbo Tenore, I need to bump it up to maybe 70, 75%. So very easy to drive. You really do not need an amp with this, guys. In fact, using an amp might be detrimental. I'll get to that later. The sound signature of these is warm with forwarded mids. A very, very bassy pair of earphones. Now, the representative from Shozi who agreed to send these to me, he told me that I need to burn them in for 200 hours, which in my view was... in just so out of what everything I believed before like I've heard burning happen before when my HE400i tamed itself overnight um, when, when I first got it brand new I've heard it in other things but 200 hours guys that's about 8.3 weeks I mean, I mean sorry I mean 8.3 days I mean more than a week so that's a long time but I listened to these out of the box. They sounded quite punchy and fun. I listened to them and I thought, yeah, this sounds a bit like my Vibro, the one I've sold since, also my first review. So I listened to them and I thought, this is this is quite good. You know, this is really good for electronic music, which I happen to listen to when I'm out and about. So I put these aside on a burning station. I returned to them after 50 hours. They sounded a little clearer up in the highs because these have a rolled off trouble, but I'll get to that later. After now, I'm at 225 hours as of recording, and the sound has gotten bassier in this whole time. So, these earphones have a lot of mid bass. Now, it's a kind of mid bass that it doesn't sound cheap, doesn't sound forced, but it's there and it is quite loud so if you watch my vibro review it comes into the has the same shortcomings as that in that it has bass that can bleed into the mids the mids are very forward and the mids are very 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 pleasing to listen to especially vocals if you join a song where the backing track doesn't overpower the vocals the vocals will sound really really good with this I can attest to the fact that I prefer these over my Carbo Basso, definitely. The Carbo Basso, in my opinion, has a bit of a V-shaped sound and quite tinny highs. This has more rolled off highs but a very smooth mid-range and very pleasing bass. Now the bass, sub-bass, extends quite low. Um, lower than my Carbo Tenore, definitely. And lower than my Carbo Basso, actually, too. Um, and it sounds more authentic in that way. Doesn't sound mm, doesn't sound like you're hitting like a, like a stump. Like it extends lower than um, I would say slightly lower than my Omni even, but not obviously as low as the THX hundred. But we're not even comparing that. That's a whole different thing. So with this, you the mids are forwarded. They're quite pleasing. Mm, they are not neutral. This is not a neutral pair of headphones and thus if you are looking for a neutral pair of headphones don't even consider this. Like if you're looking if you're looking for a neutral pair of headphones earphones, right? In this price range, you could buy two Carbo Tenores for the price of this. So buy two of those if you want because those are more neutral, neutral than these. But what these are is something that is quite unique in this price range. In fact, these have been said to punch well above their price, and I agree to that actually. I do agree to that because this has a certain refinement to the mids, which I haven't heard in earphones um, that have gone up to over a hundred. I'm not sure about 500 or even 200, but up to over maybe 150, I would say this is competitive, very competitive. But let's talk about the treble now. The treble is definitely 
definitely quite rolled off. Um, it's not as bad as the Vibro is. On, like the Vibro would be very selective with the, the genres you could run through it. But it's still quite rolled off. You will run into songs which sound like they do not gel with this. Ironically, orchestral music is one of those genres, which is something the representative from Shelzy asked me especially to try burning these in with orchestral music. And I did that, and I also use other genres. So, can't recommend these for orchestral music. You will not hear the violin so crisply as you could with a more neutral pair of headphones. What these do excel with, definitely, are electropop, EDM, those kinds of genres. The more electronic, snazzy production, those kinds of things, these are really good for those. These have really good soundstage. Very good soundstage, guys. Like I'm telling you, comparable to my Carbo Tenore in terms of soundstage, and much better than the Carbo Basso, again, in terms of soundstage. The isolation is, to my ears, I'm using the medium tips, really good. I have worn these out, and I can't, even on the bus, I can't hear much of what's going on around me with these on. In fact, I would say they're better than the Carbo Tenore that way. But that could be because Zero Audio's stock tips are inferior to the stock tips of these. Also, yes, they come with... Since I got the review model, I didn't get the carrying case that it comes with. The retail model should come with one of those. I just got the tips and, the, of course, the earphones themselves. You want to make sure... If you're using these, you really do want to make sure you're listening to music which is high quality and has good production because otherwise they will sound quite muddy. They will sound quite muddy and it's very hard for me to say to everyone who's watching this video right now that you should go out and buy a pair of these because even though I enjoy them quite a bit, it's hard for me to recommend these to everybody because of their sound signature. And I know that the sound signature of this might be too constricting for a lot of people. I'm not going to say most, but a lot of people. Also, um, if you're going to plug this into a DAP with the audio jack on top, keep in mind that this isn't curved or anything. This isn't an L shape. This is a straight cable. But for me, that's okay because for my phone, it plugs right in. It drives very well from my phone, like I said earlier. But if I plug it into, let's say, my Magni 2, Connected to my shit Gungner DAP, uh, DAC, or if I plug it into my liquid carbon especially, it gets a bit stuffy. So this doesn't benefit from amping, in fact I would say the amping factor actually reduces the clarity. So yeah, just don't bother like amping it guys. You don't need an amp for this, definitely. So really efficient pair of earphones, very specific sound signature. You'd either love it or you'll hate it, trust me. Also, 200 hours of burn-in did not give me any discernible opening of the highs. Definitely didn't give me a discernible opening of the highs. In fact, I would say that the highs remained the same, but the mids opened up and the bass opened up. So now it's even more of that certain sound signature, which is hard for me to say to everybody that you will enjoy this. But I do feel to my ears that these have a lot of merit. I have been using these outdoors and I will continue using these outdoors. To me, they sound very good with the kind of music that I enjoy listening to when I'm outdoors, which is electropop, EDM, electronic genres with snazzy production. But if you want to listen to classic rock, I can't recommend these so much. If you want to listen to orchestral, I can't recommend these so much. If you want to listen to just general pop, I can recommend these. If you want to listen to rock or metal, I can definitely recommend these. The metal, when I listen to metal on these, the guitars sound very smooth. It is the distortion. The double bass drum, if it hits, rings out quite clearly. Which is not always very consistent because even though the bass is clear and present, it's not the punchiest in the world. It's loose, to be honest. Um, the bass... Um, 
I would actually say it got a little looser over time to my ears. Coming out of the packet, this sounded a lot tighter than it did later on. But I've heard that if I replace the stock air cups with something with a bigger opening, I might get more tamed bass and better mids and slightly opened up highs. I will have to test that and I will update my head fire review with that when I get the chance to later on. So overall, I would say a good pair of earphones. Definitely go into the $100, $150 range in terms of quality while being only around $50, $55 to $60. I can recommend it to you if you like the certain genres of music that I talked about. I can't recommend these to you if you like any of the more other laid-back genres I've talked about. So, 